Hey everyone, I'm Steve from Scram Speed. Today we're continuing our series on carbureted LS engines in general and the MSD 6014 in particular. Don't worry, this is not an unboxing video. What we're going to do is answer the questions we get most often and describe the best ways to install it. Be sure to stay till the end because there are some troubleshooting tips that will help you out if you have a problem. When you purchase the MSD 6014, you get the box, the wiring harnesses, and the software. Everything you need, almost. I've sold a ton of these. There are two questions I get asked the most. The first is, does it work with the 24X and 58X reluctor wheels from Gen 3 and Gen 4 engines? The previous versions of this MSD product, you had to buy a box depending on which reluctor wheel you had. You also had to reuse some of your factory harness, which really sucked, especially if you didn't get that harness with your engine for the swap. The 6014 doesn't make you jump through those hoops. It works with 24X and 58X reluctor wheels. It includes a crank and cam sensor for both engines. It comes with everything you need electronically to make it work on your LS, except these little harnesses. They attach the main harness to the coil packs and are attached to the metal coil brackets from the factory. Most people get them with their core engine, but be aware this plug is what the MSD plugs into. You need to have a pair of these to make the box work. If you didn't get them with your engine, we also sell them on our website. The other question I get is, is it easy to install? And the answer is also absolutely yes. In the shop, we do a lot of LS swaps and we do a lot of Terminator X and Dominator EFI installations, as well as Haltech and some other EFI stuff. I have a twin turbo Mustang on Holly Dominator. I have nothing against fuel injection, but I do like my carb LS better. The 6014 is a much easier install than an EFI system, especially if your car was already carbureted. Other than the direct plug and play connections like the coils, cam, and crank sensor, and optional coolant temp sensor and vacuum connection, there are only four wires that you need to get the engine running. To use the more race-oriented features of the box, there are another three wires. Very, very easy to do. It's also a lot cheaper than an EFI system. I really like making these videos, and it isn't because I want to be YouTube famous. I want people to enjoy their carbon LS as much as I've enjoyed my own project, and if it creates a chance for Scram Speed to earn your business, then that would be really great too. If you like this stuff or this video helps you, shoot us a like and please subscribe. Back to business. The first thing to do is pick out where you want to mount your box. The box is potted, but there's no official word on it being waterproof. MSD has a pic on their website of the box mounted in the engine compartment, also displaying some really bad wiring work, by the way. I prefer to mount them inside the car. I do not know if the dial on the front is sealed and the USB port looks like an obvious water intrusion point. I put mine on the inside of the car. Use your best judgment. Once you choose a mounting location, lay the harness over the car with its approximate routing. It is much easier to install if you don't have to lengthen any of the wires. Then it's just a matter of making the connections. We'll do the grounds first. It is important to know that over 90% of the tech calls I've taken for this product end up being the grounds weren't done correctly. More about that in a minute. Each side of the coil harness has its own ground wire. Do not attach these wires to the valve covers. The valve covers are not a good ground because of the gaskets and rubber isolators for the valve cover bolts. I prefer to run them to the block. I made these connections here and here. There's also the main ground connection for the box. This one is worth lengthening and running directly to the negative post on the battery. If you choose not to run it to the battery, make sure it is really solid frame connection, something the battery is directly grounded to. A couple of things about grounds that cause problems unrelated to the box itself. Foremost being, you need to have good engine grounds. Overkill is just about right. If you have an aluminum block, this is even more true. We installed an aluminum 6.2, and where an iron 6.0 was, we changed nothing else, and it would not start until we put more ground on it. I've talked to people over and over about this. Don't make assumptions that you have enough ground. You say don't make assumptions, but how do you actually know? Simple, you use a voltmeter and measure continuity between your connection and the battery ground. Don't have a voltmeter? You need one. Thanks to the horrific disaster globalism is, you can get a $20 one or you can get a pretty good one for under 50 bucks. They're very easy to set up and you can actually know whether or not you've got a ground. With carb cars in general, there's an amazing resistance to buying just a couple simple tools that will really save you hours of struggle. I don't get it. I recommend picking one up. This brings us to the ignition wire, and there's only one on this box, which is nice. The MSD is entirely digital, and car guys have been spoiled by old school analog ignition boxes that will run on kind of sort of 12 volts. Digital boxes don't work that way. They're on or they're off. You need a healthy battery and actual 12 volts. Do not use a test light for this connection. A test light will light at voltage that won't run the box and you'll never know it till it doesn't start. Again, get the voltmeter. 
Unlike the old capacitive discharge boxes, this doesn't run a heavy power wire and switch power both, which is nice, but it does need actual 12 volts. The preferred way to wire this is using a relay and you activate the relay with a ground ignition switch in the car. This is supposed to be an easy install and some folks are new to wiring and don't find stuff like wiring diagrams and relays easy, so let's go over a couple of other options. If you're one of these folks, it's not good practice to run a fuse tap to a toggle switch to the power wire on the box. It's also trouble to find just a random wire in the engine bay that is powered at key on and run that to the box. Or worse, a wire from the battery straight to the switch and then to the box. There are all kinds of problems that happen there, not the least of which is inconsistent or not enough voltage. Most of us are putting these in pretty old cars, which means the wiring is 40 years old and was pretty marginal to begin with. People do do it that way, but they tend to blame the box when they have problems. Well, Steve, that relay diagram looks like brain surgery, and I'm putting this in an old car, and I want to do it right. What am I supposed to do? Here's one solution that we offer. It's a little more expensive. We sell them on the website. It's a solid-state relay kit, and it's an easy button for this kind of swap. It's intended to power nitrous solenoids, but works awesome in situations like this. Simple. Orange wire to the battery with a fuse, blue wire to the MSD box, and then run the ground to one side of a manual ignition switch, run the other side of the switch to a good ground. Then you don't have a hot wire running all over the car. This doesn't work with your stock ignition switch, of course, but it's pretty easy to put a toggle switch someplace unobtrusive, and hey, it makes your car harder to steal. This brings us to the optional connections for the box. They are much more straightforward. There's an onboard map sensor in the box. If you choose to use this, you attach it to intake manifold vacuum. It uses this Legris, Legra style fitting, which is cool, but most folks don't have that. If you're not running boost, you can just attach a vacuum hose to the stub sticking out of the box and make sure it's secure so you don't have a vacuum leak. Then you've got the blue wire. This activates the two-step rev limiter. You set the RPM in the software. I believe the default is 3,500 RPM. Hook this to your trans brake wire. You've got a gray wire. This is tack signal. Hook this to the input wire on the tachometer. On autometer tacks, it's usually a green wire. You don't need to do any adjusting, as is typical with an LS and such. The box outputs a V8 tack signal. The last thing is your pink wire. When you put 12 volts to this wire, it pulls timing in an amount you set in the software. Typical uses would be when you activate a nitrous system. Very, very easy, and that's all there is to it. Here's a little troubleshooting advice. If you did all this stuff and you think you have a bad box because your car won't start, you can easily check if the box is live by plugging in a laptop and looking at the software. You don't need other power to test this. The USB will power the board. If you don't get a response from the box, then you've got a dead box. I've had this happen once out of a thousand boxes, so not likely. The other thing you can do is just temporarily run the ground wire for the box and the positive wire for the box with a fuse to the respective battery terminals. Verify you've actually got 12 volts at the battery. Remember to check it while cranking. If the car starts or coughs, it's a safe bet your wiring somewhere else is the problem. If it does come to life, you'll need to disconnect either the positive or the ground from the battery to actually shut the engine off. Last is a piece of advice. Don't blame the box for a carburetor problem. It is true that most carburetor problems are in fact ignition related, but I've noticed a trend where people like to blame the thing they understand the least as the source of their problem, and it gives them a sort of tunnel vision. But if the problem isn't in the box, you can fool with the box till the end of time and you're never going to fix it. I hope this is helpful to you guys. We love carbureted LSs, and if you're starting out with one, we'd love to supply you with the parts you're going to need. Give us a look at scramspeed.com. We carry these ignition boxes, intake manifolds, carburetors, plus all the other little things you need to make it run its best and not drive you crazy working on it. That's all I got. Peace out.